Hi everyone. Um, I don't know. I was in between interviews and I have been doing non-stop promotion for first The White Tiger, then the book and Anomaly. Um, but you know, the book is coming out tomorrow and I'm feeling emotional and excited and I feel like <laughs> um, a slew of emotions, you know, there have been so many of you out there who have supported me through my entire career and there have also been those of you out there who have not, um, but this is not for you. This is for just people who are curious about me. I'm hoping that with this book you get to know me a little bit as a person, um, a little bit more than the headlines that you read about me, a little bit more than whatever is out there about me. So I decided I'm gonna give you a sneak peek, okay? I'm gonna read, um, I'm gonna read a little bit of my book for you. Ready? <laughs> this is only for you guys. Here it is, it's called Unfinished. Here, you can have a look at it with me. A memoir. I've dedicated it to my dad. It says, Dear Papa, much like the title of this book, your story was unfinished. With that in mind, I dedicate the rest of mine to you. I miss you, Dad. Okay. Now, how about I read the preface? I think that'll be fun. This is the preface of the book. I'm sitting in a meditative pose. In Sanskrit, it's called Sukhasana, or happy pose. Spine straight, shins crossed, shoulders pulled back, and chest pulled upward. I'm taking slow, focused breaths to bring all my attention to my center. Take slow breathing, calms my mind, so that I can now tackle life's problems. Kidding! I am in reality likely sitting on the set of my latest film project or on a plane or slumped in a hair and makeup chair. My breathing is erratic from the four espresso shots I've inhaled in the past half an hour while simultaneously wolfing down some form of comfort food that's probably not the healthiest of options. Doritos, anyone? My overbooked schedule glares at me with 17 emails that are marked urgent, require immediate attention. And my phone is buzzing like a bumblebee on ecstasy. I'm running on IST, Indian stretchable time. I'm late and I'm in no frame of mind to make sense of my day, let alone my life. How is this possible? When I come from mystical India, the land of yoga, meditation, the Bhagavad Gita, and one of the most learned civilizations of the world, why am I unable to invoke the infinite wisdom of my ancestors to calm my raging mind when so many people around the world have embraced the teachings of my great country and managed to incorporate its lessons of peace, love and happiness quite effectively into their lives? Well, I'm a product of traditional India and its ancient wisdom and modern India and its urban bustle. My upbringing was always an amalgamation of the two Indias, and just as much of East and West. My mom was a fan of Elvis and The Doors. My dad listened to Mohammad Rafi and Lata Mangeshkar. My mom loves London, theatre, art, nightlife. My dad loved taking road trips through our subcontinent and sampling the street food at every opportunity. I lived in small towns in northern India for much of my childhood. And I also lived in the United States for three years in my teens. Traditional and modern, East and West. There wasn't necessarily a plan to raise me as the blend of those influences, but here I am, someone who calls both Mumbai and Los Angeles home, who works comfortably in India, America, and plenty of countries in between, and whose style and passion reflect that global mindset. The cultural mashup invigorates me. It's important to me because I believe we can learn from one another, that we all need to learn from one another. Cue my husband, Nick. As I embark on this new chapter of my life with him, it seems like a good time to take stock. 
It's probably the first time as an adult that I felt the desire to look back and reflect on how I've gotten to this moment. The first time since my life took a huge crazy turn more than 20 years ago and I became a public person. Part of this desire to be introspective comes with maturity, no doubt. But I think it's safe to say that part of it came along with Nick, a mature, introspective individual, if there ever was one. Looking back, I remember how I felt as my 17-year-old self, a small-town girl who exploded into India's awareness back in January of 2000, when I was crowned Miss India World. I had no idea what to do with this unexpected, widespread attention or how to prepare for what was next. Representing my country on the global stage in the Miss World pageant. My family had no idea either, because we weren't a pageant family or an entertainment family. Far from it. My parents were both doctors. With their love, support and encouragement, I decided I would do my best to learn from each new situation that I found myself in. To throw myself into it wholeheartedly and work as hard as I knew how. Sink or swim? If there was a choice... I was always going to do my damnedest to swim. Admittedly, sometimes my strategy has been flawed or I haven't learned fast enough. But whatever my failures, they haven't been for lack of effort. I've always felt that life is a solitary journey and we are each riding on a train, riding through our hours, our days and our years. We get on alone, we leave alone. And the decisions we make as we travel on the train are our responsibilities alone. Along the way, different people, the family we are born to and the family we choose, the friends we meet, those we come to love and who come to love us, get on and off the trains, get on and off the cars of our train. We are travelers, always moving, always in flux, and so are our fellow passengers. Our time riding together is fleeting, but it's everything because the time together is what brings us love, joy and connection, which is why I am so grateful to be right here, right now, reflecting with you on my unfinished journey. I hope that whatever I have learned along the way from fellow passengers, from my own efforts and my own mistakes can contribute to your journey too. Because as I have discovered, If you're willing to be a student of life, the possibilities are endless. Priyanka. (laughs) Okay, well, I read you the preface, guys. Um, Let me know what you thought. Um, Let me know what you think of the book. Let me know what you think of my story. And um, I'm really looking forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you for coming along with me on my journey.